In an age when most football coaches are still imitating Vince Lombardi's fundamental approach to the game, Hank Stram, the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, stands apart as an original thinker. In 1969, his progressive theories made Kansas City the most entertaining team in all of football. called it Hank Stram's Wild West Variety Show. Stram was the director, and with a team of stars, he translated his daring theories into hard-hitting facts. The Chiefs outfought and outfought every opponent and race to the championship of the American Football League. In the National Football League, the championship was won by the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings had neither the talent nor the diversity of the Chiefs. All they had was a spirit that refused to accept defeat, and Joe Cap, number 11, a hungry gut fighter from Canada who played quarterback with faith and fury instead of finesse. Bud Grant and triggered by Cap, the Vikings shot down 12 straight opponents, the longest single season winning streak in 35 years. Their strategy was basic. The team that hits is the team that wins. The Vikings scored the most points, permitted the fewest, and dished out such punishment along the way that they came to be known as the Purple Gang. Neither snow nor icy fields nor rugged competition could stay their drive to the Super Bowl and a collision with Hank Stram's Kansas City Chiefs. Four minutes of play, the Chiefs gained possession of the ball and immediately revealed Hank Stram's well-conceived offensive game plan. Stram had decided that the Chiefs could move against the Viking defense on quick pitch passes in front of the Minnesota cornerbacks. All right, all right. Still, they bring on the outside. 
outside, Leonard. That double wing, far, you, do it more often. You throw it one. He can't, he can't cover that thing, Lenny. Throw it anytime. A pitch on the outside. That is, that's a good time to throw it right there. You see? Let's go tight eye double hook. Hut. Pass! Pass! That stuff in front is like stealing. We got to do more of it. Quarterback Lynn Dawson proved the worth of Stram's strategy. Six of his seven completions in the first half were quick, sudden throws to the sideline. That's it. That's the one. They can't cover that in a million years. No way in the world they can uh, cover that stuff. See, that's like stealing over there. Double team those ends. No way they can cover that stuff. So you keep them down so we throw over the top. Take it to him. The Chiefs operated from a bewildering cluster of offensive formations, leaving the Vikings too confused to properly defend the passes. We're catching them moving. We're catching them moving a little bit. They're not ready for that quick count. Look at them running around. They didn't even know where to go on the lineup. They didn't know where Mike was. No, didn't know where he was. They didn't know where to go. Yeah, Kosalki was running around there like it was a Chinese fire drill. They look like they're flat as hell. Pass! Watch a pass! After Dawson had the Vikings thinking about his quick passes to the outside, he moved his attentions to his running game. <laughs> Kansas City's running backs moved like lizards, slithering in and out of slits and crevices in the Viking line. Although they did not break free for long runs, they gained consistently and gave the Chiefs essential control of the first quarter and genuine domination of the second. Come on, Lenny! Pump it in there, baby. Just keep matriculating the ball down the field, boys. Let's go, that baby's pushing on down. What'd you have? I didn't have call the play. I wonder if we can go blue slot uh, 32 XGO back into the sideline here. All right? Keep negotiating that ball right down the field, boys. The least visible but most important aspect of Stram's game plan was executed by Kansas City's well-schooled offensive line. Wary of the quick, wild rush of Minnesota's two all-pro ends, Carl Eller, number 81, and Jim Marshall, number 70, the Chiefs made them cautious early in the game. They ran the ball inside and outside and varied their blocking pattern so often that neither Marshall nor Eller could totally commit himself to driving in on the quarterback. In the first quarter and again in the second, Jan Stenerud kicked field goals and gave the Chiefs a 6-0 lead. That's a good start. That's a good start, a good kick. That's away. Yeah, that's it. All right. OK, let's do let's a go. job. Hold up, hold hey, these guys can't move the ball the against us. Let's do the job on it, baby. Come on. Watch the play action pass. Play action pass, and make sure you keep him in that pocket. The early momentum initiated by the Chiefs' offense was sustained by an adventurous defense designed to squeeze Joe Cap in the pocket and to reach Minnesota's tough runners before they could get started. <laughs> Overpowered by the Chiefs' enormous defenders, the Viking running game gained only 24 yards in the first half. Make sure you mark it right. Make sure you mark it right. Oh, you lost your place. Measure it. Take the chains out there. Oh, they didn't make it. My God, they made that by an inch. He, he definitely gave an extra foot. Bad, very bad. 
When Cap turned to his passing game, Kansas City's close guarding cornerbacks and linebackers smothered his short passes and intimidated his receivers on longer ones. Come on, turn around! Jump! Our ball! It's our ball! Then jump it! Then jump it! The guy didn't see the ball! It's a free ball, they didn't see it. Didn't see the play. What? How can... We got six people out there and you can't see. Uh, that's a lousy call, ref. Open your eyes. How in the world can all six of you miss a play like that? All six of you miss a play. Then the ball was knocked loose when he made contact. Boy, that's a bad call. Mr. Official, let me ask you something. How can six of you miss a play like that, huh? What, All six of you. The ball play? jumped out of there as soon as we made contact. I thought, I, thought you, I thought you were talking about you being on the field. No. What? Midway through the second period, the Chiefs' secondary forced the game's first turnover when Jim Marsalis knocked the ball from John Henderson and Johnny Robinson recovered on Minnesota's 46. At this point in the game, Hank Stram decided on a most unlikely gambit. Listen, let's have a uh, blue rice lot fake draw 908-51. G O reverse, you know. Yeah, okay. Here, here comes a reverse coming from, from tight eye. Here comes a reverse from tight eye. Could be wide open here coming up. Tight eye reverse. You might pop something over back into this side, you know. But we got a reverse coming from tight eye. Come on, get him out of there, Lenny. Come on, baby. That's right, it happened fast, boys. The 51 Geo reverse would plague the Vikings all day, and it's worth repeating. Carl Ella, number 81, was lured inside by the initial fake, then chopped down by Dave Hill, clearing the outside for a 20-yard gain by Frank Pitts. Pitts's run set up another field goal by Stenerud and the Chiefs' lead increased to nine points. We break them down with these threes and then we get on that board with some big ones. Come on, Vikings, get it back. Come on, we gotta get to seven. Hey, hey, we, go, we don't give them anything, man. We keep scoring that pressure on, putting the coal in the fire, kick it up high, Jan. Let's go, come on. No frozen rope. Get it up in the air so we can cover this thing, all right? Let's go. Minnesota's Charlie West opened the way to the game's first touchdown when he misplayed the kickoff and Kansas City recovered. We got the ball, boys. Five plays later with the ball on the four-yard line, Coach Graham called for a... 65 toss power trap. Look for 65 toss power trap. What does it look like? Hey, look for our 65 toss power trap. Let's see what it looks like. Gloucester, tell him 65 toss power trap. Get in there for 65 toss power trap. Let's block! Let's Come on, go. Lenny, let's, let's get seven points! Out. Come on, let's go! 65 toss power trap. That might pop wide open, Rats. It's in there! Is it there, boys? Is that there, Rats? Nice going, baby. Yes, sir, Rats. Yes, sir, boys. Is that there, Rats? Nice going, baby. Yes, sir, Rats. Yes, sir. The mentor. 65 toss power trap. Yeah! Yeah! I tell you, that made me the chair. Yes, sir, boys. <laughs> Woo! Nice yeah, go. Yeah, nice hey, where you go? <laughs> okay, let's go, boys. Let's go, babes. Was that the there, boys? The old mentor? You saw it again on television. Yo, coach pumped it in there, boys. As we review the 65 horse power trap, watch the Kansas City line entice the Vikings to the outside, leaving Mike Garrett an open path through the middle. Garrett's touchdown made the score 16-0 and closed out a first half completely dominated by the Kansas City Chiefs. Hunt, hunt. Sweet. Sweet. The opening minutes of the second half offered a complete reversal of the pattern which had been established in the first half. What in the hell's going on out there with those blocks? What play did we blow? Wendell Hayes. Where's Wendell Hayes? Wendell Hayes. Where's Wendell Hayes? Wendell Hayes, get in there. We can't make mistakes in this game. 
Surprised and out for Kansas City's offense managed only one first down, then turned the ball over to the other half of the Purple Gang and its fierce ringleader, Injun Joe Cat. We gotta go, D! Injun Joe blazed a 66-yard trail to the Kansas City goal, running and passing for all but 10 of the yards himself. Dave Osborne's touchdown cut Kansas City's lead to nine points. Because we're going to win this game, yeah, ain't that right, Joe? Yeah, I'm going to win this game. We're going to make these guys wish to never come off a reservation. That's telling them. Hey, make sure you now pick out somebody and block, bring this ball back for us, and let's put out the fire. Get out! Listen, Lenny, again, first down, throw that, get your square out here. They haven't come close to covering him. Go, Chiefs, go! Go, Chiefs, go! The Chiefs responded to the Vikings' score by returning to the strategy which had proved so effective in the first half. And when Minnesota challenged the Chiefs' short passing game, Stram instructed Dawson to switch to his deceptive running attack. Reverse. Here comes the reverse, boys. Yeah. Here comes the reverse. Here it goes again. Reverse. Right there, partner. You got it. First down. You got the first down. Here it is. Move it. Oh, hey, move it up a little bit. You look, look at his foot here. My God, look where his front of the foot is and where you put the ball. Yeah, but here's. Yeah. You did good. You did good. You marked it good. No, he's all right. That's good. You marked it good. You marked it good. You did a hell of a job. Nice going. Great job. You marked it good. That's an excellent call. Those officials are doing a hell of a job. Was that reverse there, boys? <laughs> it was there, wasn't it, boys? It was there, wasn't it? All right, watch the With the ball on the Viking 46-yard line, Dawson decided to resume his passing tactics. It was a wise decision. In a brilliant individual effort, Otis Taylor turned a routine hitch pass into a devastating touchdown.
Mo. Oh, Otis. Yeah, yeah. That's the way to inject that ball over the goal line. Hey, I knew you'd do it, Doc. Hey, Doc. I knew you'd do it. That's it. Woo! What's that there, boys? It was very important that we score on that last drive, I tell you that. A repeat of the touchdown reveals it began from the same sideline pattern, which had worked so successfully in the first half. Taylor's remarkable run gave Kansas City a 23-7 lead late in the third period. Trailing by 16 points, the Vikings pinned their fading hopes on the strong arm of determined Joe Cat. Come on, offense, let's go! We gotta get to seven! But all the willpower in the world could not pull Cap through the rough chief defense. Two interceptions in the fourth quarter. One by linebacker Willie Lanier, number 63, and the other by safety Johnny Robinson, number 42, ended all hopes of a Viking comeback. That ball looked like it had helium in it. Hey, you can't float those balls in our league. That's right. Back it up. Much of the credit for the interceptions must go to the persistent giants of the Chiefs' defensive line who dealt Joe Cap a season's worth of punishment in a single game. Through it all, Cap was brave and tough, as he always has been. But by the end of the day, he was physically beaten something he has never been. <laughs> Defeat is a personal thing, nice going, but Hunter. victory belongs nice going, to everyone. Nice going, Willie. Hey, Johnny. Johnny, let's hey. Coach Fran get in there. Johnny, hey, Johnny. Hell, hell of a job. Nice going, baby. Nice going, baby. That's a big kick for us, boy. Nice going. Hey, Bobby, Bobby Stein. Hey, Bob, nice going, boy. Go ahead, go ahead for Mike, Len Lenny Dawson. How to be, Leonard, you're a champ. Nice going, Leonard. Nice going, baby. Nice going, baby. On January 11, 1970, victory belonged to Hank Stram and his Kansas City Chiefs, the world champions of professional football. World champions, world champions. 